Hey, everybody. Um, as Bruce introduced before, I'm Dr. Erin Golden, and I'm the assistant director of the postdoc office, as well as a former Anschutz postdoc. Um, and you've gotten to hear about from Bruce about our postdoc office and our campus, and you've gotten to hear from Dr. Alan Morris about uh, his experience as a postdoc. And now we really want to give you the opportunity to hear from our faculty. So we have three faculty members here today. Dr. Haida Ford, who's the chair of the Department of Pharmacology and a professor of pharmacology. Dr. Bruce Apple, who's a professor of pediatrics and the section head of the Department of Pediatrics. And then Dr. Mary Rayland, who's a professor of craniofacial biology and director of our T32 program in cancer biology. Um, and so I'm going to ask them to each go around and share a little bit about themselves and the research being done in their departments. Um, and then we will open it up to questions for our faculty. Um, so Dr. Ford, I'm going to ask you to go first. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your research in the department? Okay, thanks, Erin. And that was um, it was great for us to, to hear about all the new and great things at the postdoc office, too. Um, so um, as Erin said, my name is Haida Ford. I am the chair of the Department of Pharmacology. I've been a professor here at the University of Colorado for um, 23 years now, which is a bit scary. <laughs> But part of that is because I love it so much here in Colorado. So just so just so I um, emphasize that. Um, so our department of the pharmacology is is pretty broad department in terms of what we cover. Probably about half of our department faculty are neuroscientists. Actually, Bruce trained as a postdoc in our department with a neuroscientist in this department. So most of our faculty are very interested in synaptic plasticity. They work around. Um, uh, understanding synaptic plasticity, learning and memory in the context of many different disease states, whether that be Alzheimer's or schizophrenia or epilepsy, for example. Um, they do a lot of very amazing sort of single molecule type of analysis in synapses. So they study single molecule uh, using a lot of very advanced microscopy techniques. So there's a lot of cool new technology that they do, uh, also optogenetic types of um, techniques. So the other half of our department is um, more focused in cancer biology, but also basic molecular mechanisms. So we have people under looking at sort of the epigenetic um, alterations in cancers um, or just doing the structural biology. So very basic mechanistic uh, work around epigenetic uh, players or molecules. We also have a number of our researchers who are very interested in metastasis, so tumor progression, how uh, tumor cells move from primary sites to secondary sites, um, and tumor cell plasticity. So that's sort of where my lab focuses, is more in the tumor uh, plasticity realm. And we cover a lot of different types of cancers, all the way from sort of a number of adult tumors, such as breast cancers and prostate cancers and glioblastoma, so brain cancers, but also a number of pediatric cancers, including sarcomas like Ewing sarcoma and uh, rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma and medulloblastoma, so brain cancer. So a uh, lot of different areas of work. And I think what thematically joins us all in the Department of Pharmacology is uh, the study of basic molecular mechanisms that can be perturbed by uh, drugs, small molecules, right? We're a pharmacology department, so we think a lot about how we might be able to use drugs to perturb such pathways and understand them, but also to then think about developing new drugs or therapies for different types of diseases. Um, so uh, what else did you want me to, is that enough of an introduction? <laughs> I think that's a great introduction. Okay. We'll, come back. we'll come back to you after that. Thank you, Haida. Okay. Yep. Um, Dr. Apple, I'll have you go next. Tell us about the Department of Pediatrics. Hi, y'all. Um, <clears throat> Right, so I'm uh, Bruce Apple. I'm a developmental biologist, developmental neurobiologist, and so I'm head of the section of developmental biology in the Department of Pediatrics. And so let me tell you what that means. So pediatrics here is a huge department. It's more than 1,200 faculty. We're the largest pediatrics department in the country, ranked second in the nation in terms of NIH uh, funding. So we're split up into about 26 sections or what other places call divisions. We're very rare uh, for a clinical department in that um, we are purely a basic uh, research uh, section. So we really function as a basic science department within this huge department of, of pediatrics. And so um, across pediatrics, there are probably about a hundred PhD scientists within my own section. Um, there are about, let's see, I counted up, uh, we're about 17 faculty. 
uh, tenure track and, and research track. Um, and uh, we are actively recruiting. So we just uh, signed um, a letter of uh, offer just this last week and we've got another recruitment uh, going on. So in the section, um, we probably have our uh, greatest uh, uh, breadth in uh, developmental neurobiology, but we also have research in uh, cardiovascular development, reproductive uh, development, um, uh, Down syndrome, and uh, intestinal uh, development. So we um, uh, so within the section we have uh, uh, currently about a dozen uh, postdocs. I'd say. Um, one of those has a, a K99, four of those have F32s, and one is on a, a T32. So we've done very well at, uh, at helping our, our folks get uh, their into, uh, independent uh, fellowships. Um, we're continuing uh, to grow, and we're uh, emphasizing a collaborative, uh, translational, and basic uh, research in our growth. So all of their faculty recruitments, so in essence, we've uh, tripled in size in the last um, five years since I became section head. And so most of our faculty recruitments are done in collaboration with other uh, sections, uh, with clinical sections in the Department of Pediatrics. And so we hire a PhD scientist that way and we give them the basic science home. But what we do is we establish then a connection to our clinical friends. And this opens up the opportunities for a more uh, a collaborative uh, translational work. So in, uh, in, uh, as an example, the person that just um, signed on last week, we did this uh, uh, um, recruitment in collaboration with our Barbara Davis uh, Diabetes Research Center, which is part of pediatrics. Uh, he's a, a, a pancreas a stem cell person. And we have a recruitment going on right now with uh, uh, pediatric pulmonology for a lung uh, stem cell biologist as well. So we're uh, within this framework, we think we have a lot of great uh, postdoc uh, training uh, opportunities that, that are really grounded in basic research, but give you lots of opportunities uh, to uh, connect into the translational and clinical uh, child health uh, related research here on campus. Um, you know, we do a number of things to support our, our postdocs. Um, you know, I ran a graduate training program for a, a very long time, and I became, uh, and I also was a graduate student and then a postdoc uh, a very long time ago. And I was acutely aware of the difference between graduate training and postdoctoral training. Graduate training, we all put a lot of emphasis into program building. So you have a cohort of colleagues that come in and and you can support your peers uh, often by complaining about the core course you all have to take uh, together. But as postdocs, you know, it, 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 there's a, a potential for being uh, it being a kind of an isolating experience. Become as you come in and you enter a lab as an individual. And so, what we've really tried to do is create. Uh, uh, a community uh, for our postdocs uh, where they can uh, really support uh, each other. So we do things like we, of course, have mentoring committees for each of our postdocs. Uh, we pay for a monthly lunch that's just for the postdocs. They can talk about whatever. They can uh, invite people come in to come in and talk about special topics if they'd like. We provide funds for them to invite uh, seminar speakers to campus. Uh, there's funds for an annual postdoc retreat. And we also provide a pretty substantial funds for our uh, postdocs to support conference travel, uh, to attend special courses and for computer purchases uh, as well, which often is, is a little bit uh, of a tricky thing to do. Um, I guess I would uh, end uh, by, you know, and I, I think the philosophy that we've tried to develop there is, is we really want people to be um, kind of bold, feel like, like they have the support to be bold and creative. Uh, in their research and, and innovative. And so what we're trying to do is provide uh, resources. And this is not specific to uh, my section. This really is uh, across uh, the view across campus, I think. And really it's like, you know, what we need to do is provide people with the opportunities and the resources uh, for them to, to succeed. Um, 
and I'll just end kind of by picking up by uh, something that Haida said. I've been here for 16 years. I spent 10 years at Vanderbilt before I came here. This is the most collegial, interactive, collaborative, sort, supportive group of uh, uh, research community that I've ever been a uh, part of here. I absolutely love it here. Um, and and I think it's uh, just a, a really uh, a terrific uh, place uh, to do additional training and to move on to the next uh, uh, step in your career. Thanks. Thank you, Bruce. Um, I love that, that we come here and do bold research, right? Really feel like you're supported. We had a few questions um, that came in before the session about what kind of funding do postdocs get? Um, do you have to come in with your own funding? And I think really, one of the themes I'm seeing emerge in, in this session is there's a lot of different ways that you'll be supported. And really, we want you here to um, have the freedom to explore. So that's great. All right, Dr. Rayland, I'm going to turn it over to you to tell us about the Cancer Thank Center. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm going to tell you that collectively, Dr. Ford, Dr. Apple, and myself have been here 70 years. So you can do the math. Um, we never leave. Um, actually, there are people that leave Colorado and then they spend a lot of time trying to come back. Um, so people are very happy here. Um, we we really, I know I, I've i done a lot of recruiting over the years and I tell people, people are very happy and collaborative. And um, I'm really gratified when actually people come here and, and they sort of reaffirm that. So everyone's here to help you. Um, and um, the faculty are, I think, just wonderful and encouraging. Um, and I, I can say that because I've worked with many, many of these wonderful faculty over the years. So just a little bit about my background. I, um, like Dr. Ford and Dr. Apple, I also ran a graduate program for about 11 years uh, in the cancer biology program until just a couple of years ago. Um, this was probably one of the most rewarding things that I've done in my career. And I think most people probably um, have, have a similar um, thought. Um, I also am a PI with Dr. Kramer of our T32. And our T32 is from the National Cancer Institute. And um, it's a bit different. Um, a lot of the T32s here fund either pre-docs or post-docs. Ours actually funds both. And so we have slots for post-docs. And so we um, we really make a big effort to include postdocs um, in the larger cancer biology training community. And so that means that postdocs are incorporated into all the research in progress talks. We had two postdocs give a, a research in progress talk last week in our seminar series. Um, and they're very involved in, in the retreat. And one of the one of the kind of cool things that they do, which we just had uh, last week, was they plan a symposium for the um for the campus. And so we had a symposium that we re we brought back three, uh, well, we brought had four outside people come, um, two of whom had actually been here and one had actually been on our T32 and, and had been a postdoc and a pre-doc here. Uh, and then we couple that with a career development um, session where uh, these uh, these faculty, most of them are you know within about five or 10 years of, of finishing. Um, talk about their their transitions um, either to industry or to academics or um, in some cases of other positions. So um, we really try to make um, try to have opportunities for our postdocs, particularly on the T32 to um, really um, have have these networking and um, ability to host speakers and learn about um, different types of, of careers that they might go on to. I also am a PI of a grant that funds a summer program through the Cancer Center. Uh, and so we're, we've been sort of incorporated with the Cancer Center um, for, um, for many years now. The cancer training programs um, and the Cancer Center work uh, together, I, dare I say collaboratively. Um, and um, they're very, very supportive. And the other thing that I've done, which was also very fun, and I continue to be involved in, is I was um, immediate past president of the Cancer Biology Training Consortium. And this is a rather interesting thing for cancer. If you're interested in cancer biology, it's a national group of faculty um, and um, trainees that are involved in um, sort of deciding uh, what's next in cancer biology training um, for, for the country. And we work a lot with NIH and the National Cancer Institute on that. So that's 
really been a great opportunity for our postdocs here to participate in some of those activities as well. Um, let me see here. So um, I'm in the Department of Craniofacial Biology. Um, in that department are mostly craniofacial um, biology developmental faculty. So we have a have one of the top in the country um, group of faculty that work on um, development of the uh, uh, craniofacial development in both in, in trying to understand normal development, but also in the context of diseases such as cleft palate. Uh, and so that's quite interesting. If you're interested in, in development at all, I would say check us out. We also have faculty that work on RNA biology, work on signaling, signal transduction. Um, I, my laboratory has worked on um, trying to help patients that have radiation therapy and have a lot of damage to not the tumor. Of course, you're trying to eradicate the tumor, but the surrounding tissues. And this is really a huge problem um, and can, can um, sometimes patients have to stop therapy uh, because there's so much collateral damage to these other tissues. And so we work really at the mechanistic level um, in trying to understand um, changes and how to regulate um, uh, DNA repair. And we have a couple targets that we're working on uh, and hopefully we'll move into the clinic um, and, and also more recently metabolism. So I would say we're really in firmly in that arena of uh, basic science and basic mechanisms that we're trying to trying to understand. Um, so you'll find a lot here. You'll find a big, um, you know, a big uh, stretch between very, very basic scientists and people that are moving things into the clinic. And um, in, in that spectrum, uh, we have, you know, quite a, a few MD PhDs that are sort of working on both of those. And so you could be in a laboratory where you might learn and do research that are, is really mechanistic. Um, to discover new targets, but also in the laboratory, they may be um, developing clinical trials. And so you might have an opportunity to experience that whole spectrum here. And, and that's kind of useful, especially for, um, well, for pre-docs, it's very useful, but I think also for early postdocs to sort of uh, solidify where you wanna fall in, the, in that, um, in, in that very big area, what we call biomedical research. Uh, so I think I, I actually would like, um, to pass this over to Haida just for a minute, because as I said, we collaborate very strongly with um, the Cancer Center and I and the Cancer Center is very supportive of, of trainees and um, particularly postdocs. Yeah, so I'll interject here. I guess I, one thing I didn't say is that in addition to wearing my hat as the chair of the Department of Pharmacology, I'm the Associate Director for Basic Research in our Cancer Center, so in the University of Colorado Cancer Center. So like Mary said, we collaborate very closely on a number of these um, training mechanisms for postdocs, and Mary has been great in, in leading a number of these for us. So um, I guess I should also mention, so the collaborations there are great because you can, again, there's a lot of moving all the way from the basic mechanistic to the more clinically relevant, and you can work in between, and there's a lot of collaboration between the basic scientists and the clinicians. But I guess the other thing I want to mention there is it's not that's not only unique to the Cancer Center. We have a number of different centers on this campus, and the centers interface quite a bit with the department. So we have, you know, the Linda Cernick Center for Down Syndrome. I think Bruce mentioned that they had Down Syndrome researchers in his um, division. We have them in our department also. In fact, we have uh, the, the, the head of our Down Center, the Linda Cernick Center, sorry, Joaquin Espinoso. I think there was just an article in the Washington Post yesterday mm -hmm. or the day before yeah. uh, about some of the work he does um, in that space. So we're really, really known in that space too. Similarly, we have a, a, um, a lot of neuroscientists in different departments, including in Bruce's division, in, in cell and developmental biology, in our department, et cetera. And so there's a lot of interaction also with psychiatry. So across the clinical and the basic spectrum there. So the center sort of um, weave in with the department such that we have interactions, whether that be through the cancer center with people running the different training grants and um, T32s, et cetera, but also uh, with many of the different centers in the, in the institution. Great, thank you everybody. Um, so we heard about the great uh, resources that we have for once you're here to do a postdoc, but I know a lot of our folks on here are graduate students that are looking for how to get into a postdoc. And all three of you have been 
uh, chairs of graduate departments. And I'm ho hoping you could share some advice about what folks should be looking for as they're trying to identify a good postdoc mentor or lab. So I'll, I'll let any of you jump in. So I think, you know, one of the key things you want to do is identify a mentor who's going to be supportive and who's going to let you take the work, especially if you want to go to a faculty position after this point, you want to know that your mentor is going to be supportive of you taking some of the research that you develop in their lab to your next step. So I think it's always a very important question to ask whether, you know, what have they done in the past? Have they supported their own postdocs to take that work with them to, into faculty positions and where have they gone? Um, you know, I think you'll find the, the faculty here are really good about that um, and want to see their students and postdocs be very successful. So that's sort of certainly one key thing that you want to know about when you're looking at the at the sort of the next step. Um, I don't know if, if Bruce and, and uh, Mary want to interject at all. Yeah, there are so many different mentoring and learning styles. So you have to figure out what you need and what works for you. Um, and so having conversations up front about um, how do you work? How, what are your expectations? What's your vision? Um, that's just really important. Um, and uh, right. And so I, I, I agree with everything Haida says. It's also, you know, depending on what path you're really thinking about, again, just being really upfront uh, about what your own goals are and what you want to get out of the experience and what you want to take with you uh, from it. So, yeah, good basic communication up front, really important. Yeah, I would, I don't have much to add except that I think when you start your postdoc, that's when you start looking for that next step. And so make sure you're aware of what's available at your institution and make sure that you're going to partner with your mentor in helping you prepare for that next step. So that's really important that you have that kind of communication. Yeah, to, to add to what Mary's saying there, I have to say that with my own postdocs, I, I sort of tailor their project in a way that's gonna help them for that next step. And I think that's what you wanna find. So for example, I, at one point I had a, a, a postdoc come to me who wanted to teach in a small liberal arts college and wanted to take their research to that next step and had been working all in mouse models, which is what a lot of what I do uh, initially, um, and felt like it could be hard to take these mouse models to a small liberal arts college. So she and I talked quite a bit, and we figured out a project where we could move her into zebrafish models in collaboration with another colleague here, because zebrafish models would be more amenable to taking to the kind of job she wanted to get. And she did exactly that. She moved into zebrafish. It was great because I got to move into a new area. And then she was able to find a faculty job in exactly the kind of place she wanted, a small liberal arts college where she could teach and had do some of her research. So I think finding a mentor who will tailor your projects to the next step, what you want to do next is, is really important. Great advice. And I would say I'd encourage people to also, as you're looking at postdoc labs, um, to not only talk to the mentor, but at, once you start seriously considering if this is the place you want to go, talking to the folks in their labs as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you can help identify, you know, folks' mentor mentoring style and really getting a feel for what's worked well for others. Um, Alan, do you want to jump in and say, like, see if you have any advice as well? Um, yeah, I think the 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 points raised about uh, mentorship styles, um, it's, you know, going through PhD, learning from your current mentor, what do you like? What do you find could be you would you would find a different mentorship style more helpful? That's huge. It's it's really is finding the individuals within a faculty who you'll respond to their mentorship and you'll understand. And it's you know I have a very specific kind of mentor that I I find that I work with, and um, some you know it, it's just variable with where you go. And there's no right or wrong approach, you know. Um, and there are things here at the Career Development Office that I've done while I've been here which have helped me understand how to respond to different mentors, what mentorship approach I really respond to and learn more about myself and uh, which leaders that I, I work well with. So yeah, I think that's a great bit of advice and something that I used for this postdoc um, coming in the second time around to know and ask these very valuable questions of um, uh, of, of your future mentors and of, of how they work and how they would, what their expectations of you are as a postdoc. 
I will say, Alan, I also heard both you and um, Bruce Apple mention mentoring committees. And so I think that that's another way to diversify the mentorship you're getting as well. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to speak to that. But... So I think generally, um, we do try to set up mentoring committees and also for junior faculty, I think it's essential. Um, when you write a um, an F32, it's pretty much expected that you will have a mentoring committee and um, they will bring the, the um, you know, the opportunities to learn new things and to guide you in areas that you need to develop strengths in and skills in. So um, I very much recommend that people have a mentoring committee. And I think that that's become pretty much, you know, uh, shared among the faculty here. And I think most people do have a mentoring committee. Great. Yeah. Um, Oh, go ahead. I was gonna. I was gonna add to that as well. Just um, from a, just a bit of personal advice of when I started here, I think hit the ground running. Don't be afraid to reach out to people and ask. Um, the worst you're gonna hear is I don't have time at the moment. But it's just inserting yourself into the postal community and into the community, the research community that you're that you're here with. Um, and I've met people who one of the professors here was actually did their postdoc at the university. I did my PhD at, and I worked with their PI when I was there. We overlapped very briefly, although I didn't realize it. And they're now someone who's advising me. So, you know, you realize these connections of people from all around the world are, are here that you can connect with and and work work with them. So, yeah, I think just as, as I would say, I wish I'd started six months earlier, you know, just reaching out to faculty and saying, I'm really interested in what you're doing. Here's what I'm doing. Is there any way we could collaborate? Um, because in adding a mentorship, you know, um, program to yourself, if that makes sense, you're the CEO of your own mentorship program, as well as what the faculty provide, which uh, in psychiatry, at least has been excellent connecting me with people here on my mentorship team. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, Alan. So in just a minute, Bruce is going to show you how you can find postdoc positions at Anschutz. But um, I wanted to ask our faculty kind of as we wrap up the faculty panel, is there any closing advice you want to give to our attendees? Um, and actually also wanted to add in the question of how far ahead of time do you like to hear from, from potential candidates? So now, now yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a year out, it's a good time to start sending out those emails and, and talking to people and looking because it, it's always expected to take some time and you really need to take the time to find a place that you're, where you feel like you can fit, where the mentoring style is good, but also where you're really passionate about. I mean, my advice would be Go for something you're passionate about, work that you're passionate and excited about, right? Um, that makes it not feel like work. It makes it feel like something mm -hmm. fun you're doing every day when you come into lab, right? Yeah, I mean, this really has to be driven by y'all to do this because there's often no straight path, right? But often there is a path, but it takes a while to, to figure out. And I think, you know, what's... Um, yeah, this is your career. And so you need to, to take uh, uh, a hold of that. And I think many faculty um, mentors really um, like to see people who are very uh, focused on developing their career and not being passive about hey, just coming in and saying, hey, you got a job where I can hang out. We want to see people who have their own ideas who are choosing their postdocs because they have a specific career path that, that they want to, to follow. So being proactive, being uh, specific about things is, is really, I think, very uh, a useful approach. And before I get off, I, I wanna make one more note because the community is so important. And I realized that on this call, uh, Mary and Haida and I, all know each other really well, and we weren't selected for that. I know Aaron really well, and Bruce, Matt, and I get each other's email all the time because of the pop-up feature. So, so this 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 is a really easy place to get to to know people. Um, there's you know the campus is gorgeous. There's this big open sky. I'm out looking over the, uh, the the foothills right now. And I think that open sky is a really great metaphor for how things uh, uh, operate here. And I, I think it's just a, a really, really wonderful place to be. I think we would all second that or third that. <laughs> yeah. Great. I will just say, don't be shy about reaching out to people, you know? the the kind of the balls in your court you know um 
and you just need to explore your all your options and don't uh, don't feel like um, I think sometimes, especially with students, I I noticed. Well, if I email so Dr. So and So, are they going to know I emailed this person? Are they going to get their feelings hurt? Or you know, all these emotional things. Just put all that aside. We're we're not about that. We want we're about you. So don't be um, intimidated and don't try to second guess all your you know. Just just connect with as many people as you. Um, as you are interested in and talk to as many people as you are interested in. And then when you come here, maybe you'll have, you know, we all need a lot of mentors, right? I mean, most of us don't just get by on a postdoc mentor and a pre-doc mentor. We, we have a group of mentors. So that will be, you know, will help you. You'll know other people when you come here. So yeah, reach out. It's all about you and the sky is wide open, I think are great notes to end our <laughs> faculty panel on. Um, yeah. Before we